We started the show a couple hours ago by talking about what's next for Golden State. Different scenarios. What do you do with Clay Thompson? Uh, what can you say to Steph Curry about trying to rebuild or reload any players that uh, are untouchable in a situation like that? Anthony Slater, kind enough to join us, senior writer for The Athletic, covering the Warriors and the NBA. All right, Ant, uh, what do you do with Clay Thompson? You, uh, you know, you, I think, try to bring him back on a reasonable deal. You let him see what his market is. Uh, he actually had a pretty good last two months. I think he finished the season like fourth and made threes. Um, you know, he was around 41%. Like he still has the gravity of, of you know, an all-time great shooter, which really matters in today's NBA. He has a reputation, a competitive desire defensively, even if he's fallen off on that end. So he's a, I, you know, I think he'd probably command in the, you know, between 20 and 30 million a year, maybe on like a two, three year deal. Um, how does that impact the Warriors' salary cap? That's a big question, the luxury tax bill. But uh, they're trying to get... He was $43 million expiring this year. That's way too much for them. How low can that go? What is Clay willing to go? What are the Warriors willing to go? Are we reloading or rebuilding? Retooling? I don't know, right? There's like 10 different <laughs> type of words we could use for it. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, like, I think they're rebuilding around Steph, but I don't think that that rebuild, in my opinion, includes like title number five coming next couple seasons. Um, their shift, they're kind of transitioning to a different era. I mean, you probably saw it last night, right? They're they're playing two rookies. They started one of them, Trace Jackson Davis. Their other rookie led the team in plus minus this year, Brandon Pajemski. There's more Kaminga. I thought Moses Moody was one of their better players uh, last night. So that's four really young guys that, to me, you're watching that game like these guys need the minutes, not necessarily, you know, the older guys. So, uh, you know, I think Wiggins is vulnerable to, to a potential trade. They looked around at the deadline to see what he could get. Chris Paul's probably not here next year. So out of whatever, you, however you want to term that, you know, rebuilding, retooling, whatever. I think that's that's the way they're going. Well, you bring up a great point. And what happens is we overreact. Like Clay didn't score 0 for 10 of this contracts up. Now you got to move on. And I said, if I could say to Clay, we want you back, help us so we can bring you back. We're going to give you a two-year deal uh, for $45 million or whatever it might be. Give us a team friendly. We want to keep you here. We don't want to send you to Orlando where, you know, you're going to end your career without being a Golden State Warrior. Uh, and then you're also saying to Steph Curry, Steph, we, we want to still win a champ. Or if I'm Steph Curry, I got to look around and go, okay, can I win another championship? And I don't know how important that would be to him as opposed to ending his career as a Golden State Warrior. Can you speak on both of those topics? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. Steph had two quotes last night. He said, I I don't want to play. Basically, I, I can never see myself without Clay and Draymond, which, you know, when Steph Curry is making that public statement, and he's careful, uh, that's that's very relevant. But he also was like, I want to win. Whatever, you know, it takes to win. And, and some people will say, you know, it might be shifting off Clay. It might be a, a Draymond trade. But, you know, I'm not... They're very protective of of what they've built. Understandably, right? It's so rare in the NBA, especially now, like, you know, more than a decade together as teammates. That really matters to Clay. But Clay has a very interesting personality where he like, you know, you'll see it. You saw it this season. He was benched in crunch time for the first time. He was put off the bench. At, you know, uh, you guys, I'm sure saw he had several viral interviews where he's like really talking candidly about career mortality. Uh, sometimes he's really competitive and he stews about stuff. And I do think there's been times this season or even preseason when they offered him two for around two for 48 million. Uh, that he felt somewhat disrespected by like them not committing long term, giving him big money, telling him, hey, Clay warrior for life no doubt here's like a legacy payment but i also think at the end of the day knowing him knowing the way he steps back from those competitive moments and like really uh has this vulnerable appreciation for for everything steph is everything this era was uh and the bay area and him driving his boat across the water all the <laughs> stuff he loves i do find it difficult to believe that you know if the money's close and even if he feels a little disrespect from the higher ups that he'll tell Steph, tell Draymond, tell the Bay Area in general, I'm good. You know, I, I, I'm i going elsewhere. So we'll see. I mean, again, some of that is going to be how close the money is and, 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 and how he feels when he's actually making the decision. But also, if I look at the West, though, these are some young teams that are really good. OKC, Minnesota, yeah. uh, Denver's, Denver's still formidable. 
you know, if I'm the Lakers or I'm Golden State, I got to look around and go, you know, are we on their same level? And they're not. Um, no. So that's where I don't know if they can make a big swing, either the Lakers or Golden State, and go, you know what? Let's do something a little dangerous here. Yeah, and and that's when I think they need to look in the mirror and go, like, you know, if you're if really your only goal is get as close as possible to the next championship, maybe it is a blow up. Maybe it's a you know a Steph Curry trade for all these first round picks in the future and, and a couple young guys, and, and and you're on a complete rebuild. But you know, I, you guys know this, but like sports matters more than just the titles, and they have four titles. It's not like this era will end and you'll be like, man, what a failure! You know, yeah. how could you lose to the Kings? It's like, no, they won four. Is it? It's probably more important to let. Steph play this out how he wants. Let Draymond, let Clay, let Steve Kerr play it out. And I think they've signaled that. Well, yeah, you're you're gonna enter next season with them probably penciled in as like the sixth, seventh, eighth best team in the West. Maybe. Yeah. Um. They've extended Steve Kerr two more years. They gave Draymond a four year deal last year. Steph's, you know, they're saying all they're even up to management saying Steph Curry's gonna be on the Warriors for life. Um. I just think they've earned an ability to to go keep chasing titles, even if it's faint even if it's unrealistic um and you know what guess what they're gonna make a lot of money along the way right they're gonna have legacy tours and fill up the building and statue presentations <laughs> and and i think it's probably more important that to them than rebuilding by the way which is very hard in the nba you don't just rebuild and yes you rebuild a contender oklahoma city seems to be the only one doing that uh to just end this era right and 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 let them go out the way they want to who's closer to a title steph lebron KD. I mean, I would say LeBron at this LeBron and KD, you would have to say at this moment because they're literally in the playoffs. Steph yeah. Curry said it last night. He's like, do I even watch the playoffs? It's April 16th. His season's over. Um, I do not like LeBron's path now that they're playing Denver, uh, but the Suns don't look good to me. KD was the third one you asked, yeah. right? Uh, I'd probably say LeBron to me. The Lakers look more realistic that they could go on an unlikely run i just don't love that they're playing the suns the first round but to be honest if phoenix gets by minnesota guess who they're lined up within the second round great to talk to you anthony thanks for getting up for us yep all right y'all anthony slater he covers uh the warriors and the nba senior writer for the athletic